Let's move on to the fifth and final main topic today. Chris, what is main topic number five today? This is from Hamilton Stroughton. Hi, John. I was wondering if you saw that Crazy Rich Asians co-writer Adele Lim was only offered 110 k when to come back and co-write the sequel. They offered her co-writer, Peter Cotrali, 800 k to come back. Apparently, Peter offered to split his salary with her to offset the difference, but Adele said he shouldn't have to do that and walked off the project. I'm not saying everyone has to be paid equal, but how can you justify offering eight times more to one co-writer over the other when they have roughly and a roughly equal resume? I don't think you can justify that. What are your thoughts? <laughs> All right, let me lay let me lay a little bit of groundwork here. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's look at some of the factual groundwork here. Okay, so you have two co-writers for the original Crazy Rich Asians, a movie that was made for $30 million and grossed about $240 million. The movie made eight times its budget. And it's a fun little film. It's not an all-time great, but it's a fun little enjoyable romantic comedy of a film that has a lot of significance to it. Great. So you had Peter Chiarelli, who did the screenplay, along with Adele Lim, who did the screenplay. And by the way, Adele Lim, she is the writer for the most exciting thing that came out of the D23 Disney Pictures presentation, which was this new animated film coming out called Raya and the Last Dragon. I was, if you guys followed me on Twitter during that whole thing, I was losing my mind for this project. I cannot wait. It was the most exciting thing to come out of that. I'm pumped for it, cannot wait. And she's, so Disney's got her on. She's the lead writer on that. And she did the presentation for it at D23, which was incredible. Okay, so according to the reports, um, late last year, when they were trying to lock down these two to come back and write again, they offered Peter Chiarelli 800000 to $1 million as an opening offer. Not unreasonable considering the success of the, of the first film. However, they offered Adele $110,000. So you're roughly looking at about an eight times difference. Now, she rejected that. A little bit later, the production company came back and they said they made a better offer, but they didn't stipulate how much better. Maybe for all I know, it was 110 and $1 or 120. We, we just don't know at this point. Now, apparently her co-writer, Peter Chiarelli, recognized that this really wasn't fair. And he offered to divvy up his own salary to balance it out with her, which you know what? Hats off, Peter. That's mm -hmm. uh, th that's putting your money where your mouth is. I, I respect that. But what Adele said in response was, he's being incredibly generous, but this isn't his thing to do. The studio should be looking, looking after this and taking care of this. Now, Warner Brothers put out this, I'll call it right now, this completely bullshit excuse saying, well, this is studio standard. When you're looking at the uh, the resume and the work, and it would be it would be irresponsible of us to make an exception here. Really? Because you know what Peter Chiarelli has done in the last <laughs> 10 years? Two movies. He's done two movies in the last 10 years, one of which was the unbelievably horrible Now You See Me Too. The other one, which was 10 years ago, was a particularly wonderful romantic comedy called The Proposal with Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock, which I actually quite love. But that was 10 years ago. That's his resume the last 10 years, folks. That's all he's done in the last 10 years before Crazy Rich Asians. That's it. You know what Adele's done? She's worked on over seven television series and wrote over 20 episodes of successful television programming herself in the last 10 years, whereas Peter did two films. So don't talk to me about this thing, well, you know, the resumes last year, shut the fuck up. That just shut up. That that is not that is that's just basically an excuse here. And hats off. Now I'm not saying there isn't the existence of some formula that maybe a studio will go by that that's kind of their uh, their policy and stuff like that. I'm not saying that such a thing doesn't exist, but policy is there to help facilitate common sense. That's what policy is for. Policy is there to always make sure to be a guiding or start towards common sense, but common sense always needs to trump policy. Common sense needs to be given precedence over policy. Now look, also to lay some, just to lay a little bit of groundwork here, let me be clear about something. I do not believe when it comes to the movie business that two people doing the same job be there both male, both female, one male, one female, one tall, one short, one fat, one skinny. I don't believe 
that two people in the entertainment industry doing a movie, doing the same job, automatically should be paid the same thing. I don't. I'm sorry. If you're in a movie and you're some kind of new up and coming actor named Billy Smith, which also happens to be the name of the New York Islanders goaltender in the 1980s, which is my all time <laughs> favorite hockey team. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's say you're some new up and coming little actor named Billy Smith and you get the co-lead in a movie with uh, Jennifer Lawrence, just, just as argument's sake. I'm sorry. You're not going to get paid the same as Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence brings more to the table. She is of higher value to this project than you are, Billy. Even though you're going to be doing the same amount of dialogue, same amount of work, she carries more weight here. She's going to get paid more. I am not sitting here and saying that I am outraged that Adele didn't get offered the same paycheck as Peter did. Again, how they weigh the value of I've written features versus you've written television, whatever. But there's just no way to justify the notion of one person being offered upwards of a million dollars and the other co-writer to be offered $110,000. There's just, there's no way you can justify that here, especially when you look at the resumes of these two people. She's done more work in the last 10 years than he has. And again, I cannot tip my hat more to Peter Chiarelli. Uh, the, the, it, you can't overstate that. The, the fact that this dive, dude would look at that and say, yeah, yeah, this kind of ain't fair. Tell you what, I will split the difference in my salary with you to make sure we even out. And that was awesome him to do full marks to him. And again, I'm not sitting here making an argument that everybody needs to be paid exactly the same on every movie. Nope, it, you'll be paid based on the weight of what you bring to a project. That is Hollywood. I understand that and I respect that. But this much of a disparity? I mean, if you're Warner Brothers, you at least got to be a little bit aware of the optics. This is a bad move. This is two stories in a row where I'm questioning something Warner Brothers is doing. I like Warner Brothers very much. I was just at their lot the other day. Anyway, but this to me is a profound head scratcher. I don't get the logic here whatsoever. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just don't see how this is. Going. Anyway, Aaron, you see this story right now. I mean, look, we don't want to be knee jerk reactionists. And, you know, I, I understand Warner Brothers probably has some policy, some precedent. I understand one might make a little bit more than the other. I get that. But this kind of a gap for two co-writers of a film that made eight times as I don't know. What's your approach? How are you seeing this? There's so many things that I have to say about this. I'm going to try to keep it concise, which is going to be challenging for me. Um, first of all, we also, in addition to looking at the optics of the pay gap, let's look at the fact that you have a movie that is a romantic comedy really about an Asian woman's experience. And the Asian woman writer is the one that's making one eighth of what the male, the white male writer is making. Um, I don't even know if if Warner Brothers thought that this was ever going to get out. Usually they don't think it's going to get out. But um, and also I want to point out that now you see me too. Peter was not a he did not write the screenplay for that. He was story by. Right. So yeah, he, so he didn't even out. write the screenplay. So he has actually written one screenplay, and that was 10 years ago, the proposal. And you're absolutely right. She has been working nonstop in the world of television. She has films coming out. The amount of money that this movie made and the amount of visibility that this movie gave to Asian actors and Asian American actors is a massive, profound success. The simple fact that it's getting a sequel is huge. So it is such a slap in the face, not only to um, women writers, because I, I'm, I'm sorry, I also it's it's total bullshit. This quote thing, the, first of all, we would Hollywood doesn't play by quotes anymore. That was eliminated like two years ago. I, I know that as an actor, you're, they're not allowed to ask for quotes. It's illegal because of some employment law, something or other, I don't know, but they're not allowed to ask for quotes. And so the quote game doesn't exist anymore. So that's a lie. That is an outright lie. Um, additionally, I have friends who work in accounting for major motion picture, for mo major motion studio, major studios, I'm so upset right now. And they've told me that they have been in conversations with producers. I just had a conversation recently with, an, with a friend of mine who said that he was on the phone with a female producer who said 
these two actors, the, fe- the, the female actor clearly had a much larger role, but they were playing husband and wife. And she said, well, you know, let's give 250 to him and we'll give 100 to her. And he said, well, don't you think that we should make it the same because she, you know, they, they're playing husband and wife. And she goes, no, in fact, let's go ahead and offer her the 100 and make sure to close that first so that we have all the leftover money for the male actor. And he goes, don't you think that that's, I mean, we're, we're in the age of gender, pa- of, of, you know, gender equality and, you know, closing the pay gap. And she goes, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. So this is something that happens. It's common. And the reason why we're like clutching our pearls about it is because people aren't talking about it as often. You bring, you know, bringing up Jennifer Lawrence is a perfect example because when she started sounding the horn about how an American hustle, it was very clearly there were emails when this when Sony got hacked. One of the things that we discovered was that there were emails that clearly stated the women need to get paid less than the boys. That's verbatim saying that the boys will get X number of points on the back end. The girls will get these this number of points. Those were quotes from emails that were sent from the studio. They referred to them as the girls and the boys and specifically said that Amy Adams Academy Award winners Amy Adams and Jennifer Lawrence should get paid less than the boys because they're girls. My back is getting so hot right now. (laughs) This happens all the time. It even happened to me when I was working on Blue Bloods. Fuck you, Blue Bloods. I stole my pantyhose because I know that you guys fucked me over and you paid my (laughs) male co-star more than you paid me and you put him up in a hotel and you flew him first class and you gave him per diem and you totally fucked me. So fuck you, Blue Bloods. Anyway, this happens all the time. She absolutely should be getting paid. It is wonderful that Peter was offering that. But you know what? Jessica Chastain did the same thing for Octavia Spencer. Because as much as white women are getting fucked, black women, Hispanic women, Asian women are getting fucked way worse. And your co-star or your co-writer or your co-director or your co-producer should not have to take their pay and cut it in half because the studio isn't willing to do the right thing. And good for her. Good for Adele for saying, no, I'm walking from this. Because she's bringing to light a problem. Because she even said in her, in her, she put out a statement and said, if I, as the co-writer of the biggest, of a movie as big as Crazy Rich Asians, if I can't even get equal pay from that, who can and for what? And she's absolutely right. Jennifer Lawrence said the same thing. And when people want to go, oh my gosh, well, you're being paid $110,000. I'd love to have... Well, it's not about the $110,000. It's the fact that there are women who are working in other jobs where them tweeting about their boss isn't going to get the same amount of attention as Adele tweeting about Warner Brothers. So this is a problem across across many occupations. And it's happening all the way from the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lows. And um, it's something that's not talked about enough in Hollywood and quite frankly, not talked about enough anywhere. So I, I say good for her. And Warner Brothers needs to do a way more damage control and needs to rethink whatever policy they're claiming is responsible for this. Yeah, and uh, look, again, if this was a scenario, if, if it wasn't, if we weren't talking about Peter Chiarelli, right? Let's say that Adele's co-writer on this was Aaron Sorkin. Oh. Okay, right? If this was Aaron Sorkin, okay, you can make a legitimate argument. Whoa, whoa, this is one of the greatest screenwriters of our time. Totally. He brings Mm -hmm. a huge resume. He brings a lot of cachet along with him. He brings a lot of prestige along with him. And a lot of notoriety is going to come to this and blah, blah, blah. Then fine. Fine. Again, I don't think any of us are saying... Hey, Billy, who's had one day on the job and you've had 20 years of experience on the job, you should both get paid. The We're, right, we're not yeah. saying that, but we're saying, let's look at the individuals in question. Let's look at the resumes they're bringing. Has anybody ever heard of Peter Chiarelli? No. No. Has Now, granted, until Raya and the Last Dragon, which might make her a household name, but has anybody heard of Adele really? No. Have they both, do either of them have like huge movie work the last 10 years? No. Have they both been doing a little bit of work? Well, he's got a big, a wonderful film in The Proposal. She's been doing a lot of television work. When you look at all that and then go, okay, let's give him eight times more than we're going to offer her. 
it's maybe just, ten times because it was eight hundred. Yes. It's to a seven hundred thousand dollars difference. That's insane. I don't care who you are. That is a huge pay discrepancy. That is bonkers. If I was on this show and I found out that Rob was making like seven times more than me. We would have a sit down and I'd be like, Rob should make more than me because he's been here longer. He's got a following. He has this, blah, blah, blah. But to give someone that much more money, are you shitting me, man? Here's the good news. We're actually making 10 times more than Rob is. Don't Fuck yeah. say that out loud. Sorry, Rob. Rob. doesn't know. But also, I, I, there's a term that I also read about when, um, when I was digging deeper into this. Mm -hmm. It's called soy sauce. Which is which she used? She used yeah, that she term. Used yeah, she used that term "soy sauce," which is when a white writer or white male writer, in this case, um, when they bring in an Asian writer to give a little bit of the <gasps> cultural um, uh, authenticity. Yeah, oh. the cultural authenticity. When they go, okay, we're going to write a generic romantic comedy. Now we want you to come in and make it Asian for us. Tell us what we should add to it, and it doesn't actually make the project authentic to the culture it just adds as she's saying soy sauce the topping and, and she so, said her she herself was being treated like soy sauce yeah and right i was just the the asian girl brought in to to this thing and damn i, I, I it's and this the thing look there are people out there and I'm, I'm not judging there are people out there who believe too much is being made about you know gender equality and too much is being made and i would i would say to those people right now is this even if you have that point of view even you have to acknowledge in this situation of two people working on a script fairly equal resume over the past what well, you could even make an argument that maybe even adele has a better resume over the last 10 years than peter does even you would have to acknowledge, if you think in our culture we're making too much of a big deal about gender equality, even you would have to look at this and go, yeah, this is some bullshit. <laughs> this is probably some well, bullshit. Well, look at Mark Wahlberg and Michelle Williams for right. reshoots yeah. of the, what was the movie where Kevin Spacey got fired? All the because money he, in the world. All the money in the world. Um, he, Mark Wahl, there was a, a day of, of reshoots and Mark Wahlberg was paid $1.5 million for the same amount of work that Michelle Williams was paid $1,100 <laughs> for. And guess what? <laughs> she was nominated for it and he wasn't. Yeah. His performance in it was quite a a bit of a snooze fest she was fucking phenomenal so 1.5 million dollars for the same amount of work and, and she's an academy award nominee are you kidding me like it happens all the time and for the mm -hmm. people out there who were saying i don't think that gender equality and pain them well you know what you should probably talk to a few more women who have been in a situation where they have gotten fucked over mm -hmm. and the fact that if uh, yeah anyway oh yeah oh. Yeah, mm. <laughs> this, this, there's there's a lot here <laughs> to unpack, and yeah. and I think guys, listen, just imagine this though. Imagine we were talking about the same story, and, and I, I say this to everybody at home. Imagine we're talking about this exact same story. You know what? I'm not even going to go there, guys. You've seen this laid out. You've read the articles. What do you think about this whole thing? Do you think Adele should have just stuck it out anyway and done it? Do you applaud her for walking away? She's doing a big Disney movie now. Hats off to Peter. Warner Brothers, what are you thinking, guys? What are you thinking about all this? Jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. All right.